Today we're gonna to talk bear variation. So a bear, if you're not familiar, is like a hands and knees position, kind of like this here. And simply you come up and your knees hover here. So it's a phenomenal core exercise. It's based off of developmental kinesiology. Babies do it around 12, 13 months. Um, and we're, the basic bear is a great position, but then what are some variations we can do to make it more fun, more stimulus to your core, more challenging? The bear is, evergreen when you apply different movements and variations to it. Now before I forget, um, make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the little bell to get notifications of all of our updates of new videos on Instagram, just hit that follow button. Okay, first we'll go over how to set up the bear and then we'll go through, what do we have Mitch? We have six, six different variations that we'll go through to upgrade your bear position. Reach. All right, so first thing, we'll go hands and knees. And you want to make sure, a lot of times people set up like this or here or something weird with the wrist, uh, shoulder, knee, uh, hip position. Just in general, what you want to do is get your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. So if you're like this, we want to rock forward. If you're like this, we want to bring those knees in. And the knees should be, you know, maybe underneath belly button or just right under the hips. Okay, once we're in this position here, we want to get a neutral spine. So if you're not familiar with this, um, I can link uh, the little spot up here on YouTube to a video about pelvic tilting. What we want to do is be able to go into our J-Lo booty and our plumber butt and right in between is our neutral spine. So you want to cycle through, find that neutral. Once you're there, then what we do is you simply lift the knees off the ground. So all I'm going to do is lift my butt up toward the ceiling and hold. This is my bare position. Another problem that a lot of people have with this, they drop the head down. You want to make sure you pull the head up, tuck the chin in. As you can see, my spine is long right now. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm kind of packing that chin in and holding that position here. Good. Once we have that, next we want to breathe. Again, I'll do it up here. I'll link to a breathing video so you understand how to create intra-abdominal pressure. That's super important here. All right, so I'm going to get in my bare position. I'm going to hold. And I'm going to breathe. Great. I've got that, so now how do I upgrade it? The first one we're going to do is the elevate and descend. So once we're in position here, what we'll simply do is get into our bare. Right? And then I'm just going to straighten my knees while keeping my back neutral. So I'm simply going to lift the butt up toward the ceiling and then come back down. And as I cycle through, I'm going to make sure my chin stays packed, spine long, and breathing. And just off the bat, the movement makes the breathing and the core stimulus a lot more challenging. All right, so once we have that there, the, or actually, let me go over mistakes. Um, so mistakes with the elevate and descend is that instead of using the knees, we start to substitute with the back. We'll see something like this, right? We come down and we'll use this, drop the head. That is sloppy there. So we want to make sure we keep a straight spine. Hey Mitch, real quick, would you grab me that stick over there, the dowel? Good. So to give you a visual, what it will look like here, once I'm at neutral, right? Here's JLo, plumber, neutral. Does this look okay, Mitch? Yep. All right, so then once we have this, I'm gonna elevate and it's gonna slide off, but notice I'm keeping my back straight. I'm just moving my knees, right? Where we don't want, or what we don't want, is for it to look like this, where I'm rounding, right? So you wanna keep that spine neutral, extend and flex the knees. You're simply just thinking about your tailbone going up toward the ceiling and then back down. And then you do it to form failure. So um, if you're shaking for dear life or you're holding your breath, take a break. You don't need to force it. You want to challenge your, the, the, your perfect form as much as possible without cheating through it. Next is rocking. So back to bear, we're going to come up here. And you know, if you want to go a little higher in the bear, that's fine. Um, but you want to get a little more than just hovering a little bit, maybe like, I don't know, six to 12 inches is pretty good with the knees, but just figure out what's, what feels best to you. So we'll go here and then to rock, all we're simply going to do is 
basically rock forward and backward. But again, we want to make sure we're in good position and maintaining. What tends to happen when people rock forward and back is that there's a lot of spinal motion, right? They're not really moving at their hips, shoulders, wrists, and ankles as much. There's a lot of this. They'll rock forward, arch the back, and they sit back, they'll tuck the butt under. We don't want this as too much spinal motion. What we actually want is we'll take this trusty stick again, is, whoop, there we go, is can we rock forward and rock back? So look okay, Mitch? Yep. Okay. All right here, as opposed to going here and here. Good. All right. Anything else on that one? All right, so we got elevate descend. Number two is rocking. Three, we have kicks. Now we're gonna start to remove a piece of support because we've been on four appendages. Now we're gonna remove one at a time. We'll start with the kicks because actually the kicking is easier than reaching with the arms. So we'll get into bear. And then from here, we're gonna kick from the hip. So we're gonna maintain the bend in the knee and we're simply going to kick the heel up toward the ceiling. Now the big one here is you want to make sure that your back stays neutral again and you're not, one, arching the back, or number two, fire hydranting. You're not peeing at anything, okay? You're just kicking up toward the ceiling. To know if you're doing this well, um, Mitch, you mind grabbing one of those bottles behind you? Good. You can take your water bottle and put it in your back. So if I have this here, Again, remember, we're in neutral, not in J-Lo booty. For here, and we come up, we should be able to kick while keeping that on our back. If we're cheating, it'll look like this. Or if you're tilting, it'll look like that, where it'll start to come off the edge. So if I kick and I really start to turn, you'll see it slide off. Good, same rules apply with the neck position and everything else, and make sure you're breathing. Uh, anything else, Mitch? Nope. And the next is reaching. This one's a little harder, so it doesn't look like it, but it takes a lot more stability. So we wanna be able to slowly reach and alternate sides. It doesn't look hard, but we see it all the time. People have a hard, hard time with this move. Even the biggest, baddest power lifters we work with, they'll do this and they'll shift or they'll start to fall or lose position. Again, a nice challenge with this is place the bottle on your back, come up and then see, can you maintain that as you reach, right? Not doing this, right? If you don't have adequate stability, you're gonna shift your weight from side to side to create a better center of gravity. Your goal is to stay centered as much as possible. Now, then you can also take both and put them together. You can do what's called a bear dog, which is a derivative of the bird dog exercise, which is simply reaching, kicking back, you may have seen this before, especially for in the fitness world. It's the same thing we just did with the reaching and kicking, but if we combine it, come on up, and I'm simply gonna kick and reach. Kick and reach. And I only recommend this if you can really control it well. I really don't find many people that can, so temper your expectations with that. It's more of a parlor trick than anything I would say. Just stick with the alternating maybe one at a time where you go kick, kick, reach, reach, and cycle through. Next is number five, bear pull throughs. So you can take anything you want, but we'll just take one of these weights for the sake of convenience. And we're just gonna pull it with one arm at a time. So I'm gonna start with this on this side. I'm gonna come up in my bear. I'm simply gonna grab it, pull it across, switch, pull across, switch, pull across, and so on. So any sort of weight, object, whatever, and that may actually be a little easier than the reaching. So if you're having trouble with the reaching part, you can maybe do the pull throughs ahead of time to challenge it and then work your way up to the forward reaches. Okay. Next, we got crawl variations. So before that, it reminds me, you can also do some fancy stuff with bands. So you can do like a band a bear pull. So if you're really good at reaching, you can set up the bear and you can even do pulls. You could do pulls this way. I guess you could do a bear press, right? So we'll start here. 
This is hard on the arm, but it's actually the band. It actually helps you stabilize your core, oddly enough. So there's a lot of different variations you can do once you have the, simple, the bear exercise down. All right, lastly, crawling. So it's a simple bear crawl, right? But you want to maintain your proper position as we've discussed. So I'll set this up in my bear, and I'm simply going to reach opposite arm, opposite leg, and control my stability as I go. We can also go backwards. Good, and then a fun one, we can go side to side, All right? It takes a little coordination. So when my feet are apart, my hands are together. When my feet are together, my hands are apart. And I'm alternating, and then you can have some fun with it. Turn, All right? All while maintaining neutral spine. I'm getting a little tired here, almost done. All right, so let's see how well I do with this. All right, side, good. Here, I'll show you my, my good side. Good, we get the point, okay. Whew. All right, and then last but not least, as a little bonus, take your phone, set it for two minutes. Do any of these bear crawl variations like this, but go as slow as possible within that two minutes. So you will literally crawl as slowly as you can the entire time. However, which way you want, but you wanna go ultra slow for a full two minutes. Uh, I don't know anyone that, was, that doesn't struggle with that. So if you want an ultimate challenge, set that phone for two minutes. You know what? Set it for five minutes if you wanna be ultra bold and see how well you do with it. So I don't wanna hear you complaining that, oh, my core exercises are too easy because there's plenty to work with here. Oh, I need a break. All right, anything else, Mitch? No, you're paying me the dollar. <laughs> All right, okay, till next time, thanks.